Hello and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install Vortex so you can use mods and download them without having any issues. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to create an account on the Nexus website. But once you have that done, you can scroll down below at the link I provided. Now it should be description by default. Otherwise, <clears throat> it'll go into your files. Click on files. And the version I'm using is 1.1.14. And it should say one click install. This is preferred way of installing Vortex. Go ahead and click manual download. And once you click that, you might get a pop-up saying, are you sure you wanna download this? Click yes. And then on the bottom left should be the download itself. And once that's done, go ahead and click that and follow the instructions. They're very clear, and once you have that installed, I will show you the actual software. And for some reason, if you can't find the download right in this area, if you go into your web browser's downloads, it should be right there, so you can click on it and have no issues. All right, so once you have it downloaded, it should bring you to the dashboard, and this area will be empty because you won't have any games, and this area as well. So what you're going to want to do, click on games. Now, you notice it says manage two right here. For you, it should be zero. Otherwise, there will be nothing there at all. You're going to click on scan and scan fully. You can scan quick as well. It does not matter. And then once you have your game selected, you're going to click manage. And then it should give you an option to make it a managed game. And then once you have it in here, it should automatically come up here. But if it doesn't, if you want to, if you just highlight over it, it'll say activate. If you click on it, it'll load. And as you can see on the top left, it opens. I'll open back up Fallout 4 since we'll be using that for today's instruction. instructions. The next thing I have you do is install a script extender. In this scenario, it is going to be the Fallout 4 script extender, which I have a link provided in the description. If you're using this for another video, just Google search. Uh, I'll give you an example, Skyrim script extender. And then it should be a link with a silverlock.org. And then once you have this screen up, you're gonna wanna choose your version, which is this one at the top. And you wanna click seven archive. If you have the VR version, you wanna use the VR version. You can go ahead and it should be the same type of setup. Click seven archive. It'll have you download this. Go ahead and download it. Once it's done downloading, you get the single file. Go ahead and double click on it. Once you have it double clicked on, um, open up your, go ahead and open up File Explorer. And once you have File Explorer open, let me just show this on my screen. So I to make sure I didn't have anything on there. I didn't want you guys to see. You're going to click on local disk and then program files steam steam apps common and then whatever game you have which mine is fallout 4 so you click on fallout 4 you keep it here click data once hold in shift and then click the last of it go ahead and click once drag it and if it asks you to replace any files, go ahead and say replace the files in this destination. Now every single time um, the game is updated, especially with the Creation Club, we need to go back to this website, this silverlock.org, and re-download this. That way uh, everything runs just fine because it will break the game. Basically every single time the game updates, you need to go back to this and download it. Another thing I might add is that you need to create a shortcut for this. Well, I'm going to call it the phase loader, the Fallout 4 script extender. And you're going to go ahead and create a shortcut, drag that to your desktop, and then you can use that to launch your game instead of using the actual .exe file itself. That way all your mods load properly. And another thing I forgot to add was wherever your Steam is located, mine's located in my C drive. Um, you're going to want to go into your Steam file, then you'll be able to find Steam apps, common, then the game you're looking for. 
All right, now that we're back onto the Vortex software, we're going to go ahead and go into our settings. First thing you need to go to is the download tab. Make sure this handle is selected. That way, whenever you click on these links, it works. If you do not have this selected, it will not download automatically. And you really don't want to be downloading everything manually. It can be a pain to do. Um, by default, you should have a download folder. And you'll also have a mod staging folder. Um, I don't have mine adjusted. This is just what the program selected for me manually. It's in my users folder, app data, roaming, and then vortex, Fallout 4 mods for mods, downloads is similar. It's an app data, roaming, vortex, downloads. Now, just repeat myself, I don't adjust that. That way there's no issues. Once you have the game selected on the top left of your screen, you're gonna to wanna to go into downloads and then go ahead and go onto the gaming website, well, the games website. And for this, I'll be using Fallout 4. Give it a minute just to load here. And I'm, for this, just gonna choose a random mod to download. So we're gonna to go to top files, if it ever loads. All right, it just loaded. I don't know why it took so long, but a uh, mod I'm gonna download here that I keep forgetting to do it is, uh, which one is it? Scrap everything. We'll do, go ahead and do this one. Let it load. All right, so once you get onto the page itself, never, I usually do not download mods that uh, don't have a picture in the description. That's just, I've been doing that since 2009. I mean, really it's, it's a safety thing with me. Some of them don't have pictures, but majority do. So I just download the ones that do have pictures. That way I don't get a corrupt file or something like that. It's just something I do personally. Once you get into the actual thing itself, you want to read the description and click on the requirements tab and the mods that require this file. These are ones if you want to use any of these mods, you need to have this installed. Now there's two types of requirements. You have mods requiring this file and then the other one is mods that are required in order to run this. So basically, once you go through there, you can read the description. I mean, read all of it. Don't miss a single thing. Make sure you read everything down here. And they do, majority of them provide how to download it, which is usually through that Nexus Mod Manager, which is also called Vortex. They changed the name of it when they updated it. So you should be just fine. If it ever says Nexus Mod Manager, it really means Vortex Mod Manager. I'm just gonna make sure, make sure you always read the known issues. That way you know exactly what type of bugs there are and what you need to fix. And then these are just the, what they added and what they added in the versions and stuff like that. So go ahead and click on files. Now, if you didn't listen to me when I said, check that mod manager download box, this will not work. So make sure you have that clicked on. And then once you click on it, you click on it and just give it time to load. You'll get this option. If you have the free version where you didn't pay anything, click slow download. If you have premium version, where you, which you paid for on the website, click fast download. I have the free version, so I'm gonna click slow. And then from there, I will get a pop-up box asking if I want to open this. I'll click open. You may not get that, but you probably will. If you don't, just open up Vortex, and the reason why I went to downloads is that way you can see it is installing right now. When it started, the exact file size, and the estimation will be completed, and the percentage. Now, I will see you guys once this is downloaded. All right, it's all downloaded. Now, whenever it gets done installing sometimes, well, you always get this notification bell. You can click install from here, but normally I'll click install from the actual download itself. If you click install, it should do this. Then you know, sometimes you get a menu, sometimes you don't. Now here, let's see, individual DLC support. Don't select any of these if you're using the ultimate edition. Okay, what's the ultimate edition? Make sure you read these 
really good because if you don't read them and you install something wrong, the game will not work. Now it's DLCs. So I have all the DLCs. So I'm going to select that. And then I do not need to select this. However, if you're downloading this and you do not own all the DLCs, select the main plugin and any mod or any DLC you do have, click on it individually. But I have every single one. So I'm going to select Ultimate Edition. Then you click Bug Fixes and Options. Let's see, Fixes, not being able to sprint in settlements via. Okay, I don't need any of these. These are your preference, and I have a mod that already adjusts the sprinting, so I don't want to screw anything up. I'm going to click Finish, and then it should say Mod Installed. You can enable it or dismiss it, but just for this purpose, I'm going to show you how to go into the actual mods itself. Now here's my mod menu. Yours should be completely empty except for the one you just downloaded. I'm going to have to scroll down to find mine. It should be a blue box. I take that back. Looks like it is a gray box is disabled because we already installed it. But if you also did want to, um, instead of using your downloads, you can go into your mods. It'll be a blue box. I'll show you what it looks like here. If I click uh, uninstall, it'll look just like this for uninstall. Now all I have to do for the scrap everything is just click it once and it should enable it. But the one that if you have the blue box ever, you just click on it once. And it should make it disabled, and then click on it again. It's enabled. It works. One thing I forgot to add was the plugins tab. Um, don't screw with this unless if the actual mod you're downloading tells you, like, hey, how do you want to load this? The Vortex itself is actually pretty good at being like, hey, this should be loaded before this. Let's say uh, load after, for example, and I'll say suggested. I always click the suggested one and it works just fine. That's why you always want to play test your mods. That way you know what works and what doesn't work. Um, if you do really want to know how your load order is and what's loading first, if you go through your selections, um, I have a ton of mods, but so the first thing that loads for me is the robot ESM, then two, and then three, and then you get the point basically it goes up and it shows you how it loads the first thing it actually loads the ESM. I just realized it starts off at zero. I always forget programmers start zero to whatever instead of one to whatever. But that's the basics of it. Um, this is something you need to mess around with yourself to get a better understanding. I can't put into words how to use this at the moment. Um, I may make a video in the future describing this more, but uh, just. If you mess with it yourself and just follow Vortex, it should work just fine. Always play test your mods. I'm gonna repeat myself over and over and over again. Play test your mods. Can't tell you how many times I've seen people <laughs> download. I have, for example, 79 active mods. They'll download this many mods and they'll go to launch the game. It will not work. It just won't work. Why? Because I didn't play test it. You're essentially hoping you get lucky if you don't test it. So, yeah. Now we're going to be launching the game itself. So let me just go ahead and log out of these. Now right here is that .exe file is telling you about your Fallout 4 script extender, known as Phase. Otherwise, if you're using a different one, go ahead and use that one. Now I'm going to click on it, and it should launch just fine. Let me just let it launch here once. I'm going to load it and make sure it works. Okay, it looks like it's working. Um, the reason why you always want to launch after you install a mod is to check your... make sure the game's still running because the game will crash the desktop right away if it's not running properly. If that's the case with any mods. You need to undo what you just did and figure out why it's not working. Some mods just don't work with each other. Um, if they don't work with each other, some of them have fixes, some of them don't. Um, you can't download all of them, unfortunately. I wish you could, but you just can't. Now, I'm going to run around for a couple minutes here and make sure it's running, but it should be. Um, basically, if you install, I have a little thing I like to follow myself, or a rule, I should say. 
every three mods you install you should check your actual save file always create a character fresh run them through the vault run them just so he gets up there and then go ahead and run around for a couple minutes and you should be all set the game does not crash if it does like i said before you need to figure out why it's crashing all the time um i have about i'll log out now that should be good enough it's just a basic mod but basically i have 79 total mods installed or it should be 80 now because i installed another one and my game's running just fine uh, it really depends on your rig if you have a smaller end computer or not small yeah you get the point if your computer's not high spec don't download that many mods because you can't run it uh that's why i need to play test uh keep in mind whenever you download like any i know there's a mod on nexus called uh basically it enhances diamond city makes it bigger if you have a low-end rig, dude, you're going to have problems. Uh, FPS drops are constant. However, I know I have a higher-end rig, so I don't really have any issues. Uh, no frame drops or anything, but if you're running it on the lower end, I thought I'd mention that. Anytime you're adjusting your any files or any type of file that is adding anything to the game, you will drop FPS eventually. So just cut your mod list down. I would say if it's a low-end, around 50, it'll be good. Um, high-end, you can... <laughs> do over a hundred uh i just really don't think i can install that many mods it takes quite a while to install them with the free version so if you have any questions i do live stream on twitch during the weekends friday saturday and sunday usually it's uh before noon central standard time go ahead and just drop on there and ask a question if you do have one uh i will answer it without any issues thank you for watching the video um you can subscribe if you like otherwise just like the video I'd really appreciate it if you're watching to this point. So, all right, I will see you guys in the future.